it's Miranda here with my daughter Alana from Solana's Creations and today we are coming live today to do create some planners so I never can find a planner that I absolutely love for when I'm homeschooling all four of my kiddos usually my planners are like this they're huge they're bulky um, and because I'm homeschooling all for my kiddos, they only have so many lines right here, and I always run out. I never have enough room to write all their lessons down, along with, for all four of them. They're, you know, they're all in this, two of the oldest ones are in the same grade, and then my boys are in the same grade, but we gotta record grades too. So, I decided to get a little creative this weekend, and thought I would just vlog about it and come on and show y'all how I did it. That way if y'all want to create your own planner, you can. So this is kind of what I made. I wanted to walk y'all through. Um, I did this using my metallic pens and my Cricut Maker. So let's go ahead and get started and walk through everything that you would need. So I went, I wanted something really sturdy to where it would not be ripping out of the um, three ring notebook when I'm traveling or when we're flipping through it to see what we're doing for that day. We are doing seventh grade ex at a ex express speed, so say. Um, I wanted to make sure eighth grade went off without an itch. So, right now we are trying to start eighth grade in September. It's also going to be to where it's not going to be such a fast pace, but I want to only do a four day week versus a five day week. That way we do have the extra day if we need to take a day off or if we're just like so overwhelmed that we need to stop, spend a little extra time on the lesson or something of that sort. So you'll definitely need cardstock of your choice. Um, for Celeste, she wanted her two favorite colors, which is purple and pink. I got this cardstock at uh, Target. Well, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, any of those you can get them. Then for uh, her cardstock, she did pick out her markers. She wanted um, something a little bit different than what I just showed y'all, but she wanted silver and gold for the black. I don't know if y'all can see this too well. Let's see if I can bring it in a little bit. Um, they're just the medium point markers that I got from Cricut. And then for the uh, purple one, she wanted the gold and silver as well. I messed that up. I'm sorry. I'm looking right at it and I still don't see it. Purple and silver for the black. Sorry. And gold and silver for the purple. There we go. She corrected me. Then for... And if we have enough time, I'll go ahead and walk through Alana's and we'll show you the final product. Now, you'll also need a three ring binder. I just went to Dollar Tree and got a dollar one. Now, I found these cute little four color pens that I want to use for the planner. And considering that they're darker color, or some of them are darker color, I think these are going to show up really great. With those colors, those will not be used for the Cricut Maker. Those will definitely just be something I'm able to write in. So with furthermore, I'm going to share my screen, walk through how I created this design by using just the text font and the shape fonts, or the shape uh, tool, and then we'll transfer it over to the Cricut Maker, kind of walk through how we did it. So, let me get y'all switched around and get over here so I can kind of show you. So once you open up your design space, you're just going to go to new project. And for this new project, um, to create the planner, all I did was I went right here to shapes and I selected a square. <clears throat> now, when you first select the square, it's going to show it as the line type cut. You want to change this to draw. And this is going to allow the Cricut just to draw this outer line. <clears throat> and um, after you have this one there, you don't need to worry about the size right now. 
just for the fact that once everything's put together, we'll size at the end so that everything will fit on your eight and a half by 11 sheet. So for this one, I'm just going to duplicate it. You can either hit the duplicate button or you can go back to step one and do it again. I just find it easier just to hit duplicate and I want to line everything up. Now the easiest way to do that is you're going to select both of these. You're going to go to a line top and then you notice right here you still have a little bit of gap. So you're just going to select that one and bring it over just a little bit. So that line kind of makes becomes one. And this part is kind of tedious just because you have to get it there. There we go. And you don't have to worry about lining up at the top because you can do the line function. Now you're going to select both of these. You're going to go right here to align. You're going to go align to top. And now it's completely lined up. Now we want to go ahead and attach this just because we don't want to have to redo it time after time. So with this one, um, I like to use my grid marks right here, so I try to put it on at least one of these lines, just because that's going to come into play when we're replacing our lines. <clears throat> now I'm going to make sure that this one is selected, I'm going to go right here to duplicate, because we need a total of six. And you're going to have to do this in the same exact way that we did the first time, where you just bring it up until that line disappears. Then you're going to select both squares, or all four squares, and go up here to the line. This time, instead of aligning at top, we want to align to the left. That way we get this completely lined up. And now we're going to need to play it again. We only need one uh, more set. So we're just going to select this bottom one and go to duplicate and do the exact same thing. And we're just going to line it up. Now we're going to select the whole entire project and we want to go to align to left. This is just going to make sure that everything, that all six are aligned straight. And then select everything again. And now this time we want to um, attach it. Now if you need to, right here is where your uh, zoom in and out is. So just zoom it out to where you can see everything. Select it and go to attach. Now I'm going to move over here to the center of my screen. And like I said, I like to align it to one of the grid lines just because that's going to help me when I go to place more lights, which we're fixing to do. Now. <clears throat> Now we're ready to place our lines. So I'm going to zoom back in just so we can see, just so you can kind of see what we're doing. Now, this one right here will be our first line. This is where our header is going to be, and then that gives us one, two, three. Oh. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines. Now you notice I had to put it back. I put it back on 100% just because I want the tiny grid lines. Whereas if you're zooming out, you see that the grid lines get much bigger, and I don't want that. So you can definitely zoom in or out depending on how many lines you want. For my project, I want eight to nine lines, and um, so I have enough room to write all their curriculum. So definitely, you know, you can just kind of play with it and see where you want your line. So this one at 50% would give me one, two, three, four lines. 75% uh, would give me one, two, three, four as well. So definitely put it on 100 so that you can get those lines. Because this is two, four, six, eight, ten. So this one will actually get me ten lines, which is great. So I'm going to go right here to text box. And for mine, I'm just going to hold down shift and do the underscore key. Now notice it's changed the line tag back to cut and I want writing. So I'm going to change that to drawing. 
If you choose one of the fonts that are already preloaded, it's going to do a box instead of a line because that's going to bring you back to your um, kind of bubble blocks when you don't choose a writing uh, text or a writing font. So I'm just going to double click this because I want a writing font. So I'm going to select my fonts and I chose a Cricut font. You can definitely play with your different fonts, but for this particular project, I use Agent Q for my underline. Change line type back to draw. And you'll notice uh, this is to writing. And that gives me my straight line. So I'm going to scoot this over to my project. Now for my top header, I do skip uh, to the second grid line because I want that to be a little bit bigger of a gap, but the rest of them is going to be at each line. So let's go ahead. You want to make sure that everything is aligned. Um, so just choose a side that you want to align to. Like this one is already kind of aligned to our right side, but I notice that it kind of overlaps a little bit right here. So I want to bring it in just a little bit and then line it. Now I can now, instead of having to read all everything, I can just duplicate that line all the way down my paper. So I'm going to go duplicate and I'm going to put this on the next line for each of her subjects. And I'm going to do that for the rest. Now, once you get this first uh, two squares done, the great thing is that you don't have to do each square this way. You can actually select all of these and bring them down, kind of like what we did with the squares, which is great. Okay, so now that we have that selected, because I'm using the grid line, you'll notice that my bottom line here is no longer on a grid line. It's actually between that. So you can do one or th two things. You can select everything and kind of raise it up until it hits a grid line, which is what I'm going to do. Or you can just kind of go in between. So now I'm ready. And as long as you select everything, your lines that you're doing right here will transfer up with it. Sorry about that. I don't know why um, they kind of delete it. So we're just going to bring it up. We're going to select everything. As long as you have everything selected, you can now move this as one project. Now I'm just going to bring it up until this one goes onto a grid line. Now I'm going to select my lines by holding shift. Select each of my lines. and hit duplicate and now we're going to bring this down and you're just going to place this on your grid make sure everything's lined up go down and you're going to do the exact same thing so i'm going to select everything i'm going to shoot zoom out so i can see my whole entire project make sure everything's selected and just place that top square onto my grid line go back to 100 percent and now i'm ready to select each of my lines And duplicate, bring them down, now you're completely back. Now since Saturday and Sunday saves this one, just determine how many lines you want for Saturday and how many you want for Sunday. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, I'm going to shrink this one right here. So now I have room for Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Now I'm just going to go through and make sure that all my lines are touching all the, all the uh, side lines and make sure that they're even. 
The fastest way to do this is zoom out just so you can see your whole entire project. So you can make sure you get everything. Select your whole entire project and then align everything to the left. Then you can zoom back in and see if you need to make any kind of adjustments. So if everything looks good to you, then you will just attach everything and it becomes one big project again. Now, now you are ready to do your days of the week. Um, I'm ready to do my daughter's name in seventh grade. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and do the, her, the grade level, which will be for seventh grade. Sorry, my sons are in the room with me. So if you hear them whispering, they're playing the game. So I'm just going to select everything because I want it to be centered aligned. So I'm going to go right here to alignment. And I'm going to click center, and that's going to even everything out. Now, for this particular font, I don't want to use Agent Q anymore. So I'm going to select font. I'm going to click this X. And the font I am using now for the grip. Okay. So for her grade level, I'm going to use a font called Anna Fancy Lettering. Now, um... This is another font that I did purchase, so definitely if you don't want to purchase, you can go through and kind of play with your lettering and your fonts and see what kind you would like. So I'm going to take my uh, seventh grade. The other thing to remember is I see this has a huge gap right here, and I don't really like that. So I'm going to go up here to line spacing, and I'm just going to shrink that. I'm just going to click the arrows and get it as small as I can get it to where it's kind of close to each other um, until it's where I like it. And you can do this with any type of uh, lettering. This particular one is going to adjust the spacing between the two letters or the wording and this one's going to adjust the lettering this way. Okay, so now I'm ready to kind of put this up above my project. So I'm going to zoom out just so y'all can see everything that I'm doing. I'm going to select the wording and I'm just going to left click and drag it to the top of my project. Now, I can already see that this is going to be way too uh, big for my project. As you can see, my project's already 11.731. And I only need it to be 11, um, but because in the Cricut design space, you have that fourth of an inch on your mat that it automatically adjusts, I'm going to actually want my project to be at eight. <clears throat> so <coughs> I definitely want to shrink it. So I'm just going to use my arrows and shrink it and then bring it back down. So now I'm ready to place her name. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to text again. I'm going to type in my daughter's name. Again, I want a different font. And for the font I'm using for her name is called Folk Art. So I'm going to go right here to font. I'm going to X out. This is another font I did buy. And you'll notice it says Folk Art Festival. So I'm going to select that. Make sure that your line type is still at draw because sometimes it does change it if you're not using a writing font. And now you notice her name does kind of fall off the edge, so I'm just going to adjust it. Uh, for that, I'm going to hit the unlock so that I can make it take up, start where the seventh begins at and ends right at the bottom. Now, I don't want her name or her grade touching the top line, the other thing I want to do is I want to select 7th grade and Celeste. I want that the same color, but different color than her grid line. So I'm going to go right here to my color. I'm going to select that. And for her project, because we're using two different colors of paper, we're going to be changing the color quite frequently. So I'm just going to do a default color of red. 
So anytime my Cricut tells me to put in a red pen, I know that's going to be for wording and I can just put in the color she's wanting. Now we're ready to put in the days of the week. So before I do that, I'm going to select everything and I'm going to attach it just so that it becomes one product and you're not having to worry about accidentally uh, moving one or the others. So now we're ready to put in our days of the week. Now before I do this, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it just so that I don't have to worry about going through and trying to duplicate after I have the days of the weekend. So I'm just going to select the whole entire project, go to duplicate, and now I have my two planners. So now you're ready to go through and be able to set up your days of the week and set that up. So we're going to go to, to your text and we're going to type in Monday, July 6. Again, I'm going to change my font. I do not want to use the same font. So I'm going to go up to font. For this, for the days of the week, we used a um, Jolly font. So I'm just going to type in Jolly. We're going to make sure the line type is at draw and the style is at writing so we don't get those block letters. We're going to shrink this and we're just going to bring it straight up into your box. I'm going to zoom in so that we can, we can see what I'm doing. Now don't forget you can click the unlock button and that's going to allow you to shrink it both ways or extend it if you want it to be a little bit longer. Now, we are going to select this and we're just going to bring it down and kind of try to center it the best we can into our blocking. And now we're ready to do Tuesday. And you're just going to go through and put in all your dates. Okay, so now we have the first week done. I want to go back through and I want to change the coloring of the days of the week, just like what we did with her name. This time I'm going to select it from over here. So I'm just going to hold down shift key and I'm going to click each day of the week. I'm going to go up here to where it says draw right beside it. Click this little box and I'm just going to select red just for the fact that we want the same color as her name and the grain. And now I'm ready to attach everything. So I'm just going to select everything, my whole entire project, and I'm going to, you want to make sure you do select everything, so you might need to zoom out just so that you can see the whole everything. We're gonna highlight it, bring it up, and then we're gonna click attach. Okay, so now you're ready to do the next day of the week. Now for the next um, set, we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're just going to go to tax and you're going to type in the same way.
Okay, now I'm gonna zoom back in so that we can get everything online now that I have it all typed out. And I just wanna make sure everything's centered in the way I want it. So once you have everything adjusted, we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did over on the other side and change our color of our font to red. And now we're ready to attach everything. So again, you're gonna to want to probably zoom out so you can see everything and make sure everything gets attached. And now you're ready to print uh, two weeks of your calendar. And I'll show you, once we print these, we'll come back. I'll show you how you go through and change the dates for the remaining two weeks. So after you do this part, you're going to go, notice how I told you we would adjust the um, size once we got done so that we can fit it onto our sheet. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to start with the first one. If you'll just click it, you'll notice that it is 6.262 wide. Well, I know I want that a little bit bigger since my paper is eight. So I'm gonna unlock it. I'm just going to select right here. I'm gonna put in eight. I don't wanna go to 8.5 just cause like I said, that you have that fourth of an inch that, that gives you. And for my height, my paper is 11. So this 10.5 will allow that to be just fine. I'm going to do the same thing to the next one. I'm going to click my unlock button and I'm going to go to 8. And I'm going to leave the height the way it is. And you're just going to hit enter after you type in the it. Now when you have bigger objects like this or bigger projects, your uh, Sometimes the uh, design space can lag a little bit. So now we're going to go up here to make it. You'll just select that. And it's going to transfer everything over. And right here you'll notice this is what I was talking about on that line of where it does do it. So I'm just going to line my up and noticing I did go a little bit too big, so now I'm going to go back and hit cancel. And I'm going to go ahead and shrink my projects just because it falls right on that 8.5, if not a little bit over. And I want to leave room to do a hole punching. So I'm going to select my project and I'm just going to keep it unlocked. I'm going to go ahead and go back down to a 7.5 and see how that works. And you're gonna need to do that with both projects. And now we can go to make it. So once you go back, you're going to line up all your stuff. You want to make sure you have room to hole punch and make sure that you're not going over your page size. I'm going to do the same exact thing for the next one. Okay. And now I want to make sure that I have the right um, page selected since we are doing a color coordination. So I know this one's gonna give me my six, so I wanna make sure I have that one selected and you're gonna hit continue. Now you're going to want to make sure you either have your computer plugged directly into your Cricut or you have it connected by Bluetooth.
And now for step one, you're going to select your material. Now we're using a 65 pound cardstock, so I'm just going to select medium cardstock, which is the 80 pound. It tells you what tools you're going to need. So you're going to need a red pen and a black pen. Now, however, our black pen will be for our line. So whatever color you decide for that is what you'll load in. And then the red pen will be for your wording. So whatever colors you're wanting for your wording, you would insert that. Once you have everything selected, you're ready to now go into your Cricut Maker. You will load the mat and it'll be ready to go, which I will show you. And let me switch you back around and we'll get started. So y'all can see my maker. Okay. So now the first one I'm going to do, I'm just going, I'm going to use my green mat. So I'm going to start off with my black as first. But you're just going to eat, make, match this up with the sides, load your mat, press everything down. Because you don't want your paper to move while you're doing your project. Okay. And then you're ready to load. Now, load. now we're ready to load it. Our flashing light's flashing. So we're just going to press that. It's going to register what all it's cutting. And now it's time to load the pens. Now on my screen, it says to load the black pen. Well, I know the black pen was to draw the lines. And for this particular one, we actually want to use silver. So I'm going to find my silver pen. I'm just going to place the cap on it. Now remember, this is a um, medium tip, not a fine tip. You're going to want your arrow to be facing you. You're going to unlatch clip A, and you're going to carefully place it in there and press down until you hear it click. And then you're just going to walk it. Now, I don't really ever take out my blade for my uh, slot B, you can leave it in there. It's not going to be cutting, but it's not going to hurt anything. So now it's ready to go. So I'm just going to hit uh, my Cricut. And now it's sending everything over. Now it's going to take a little bit of time to uh, draw everything out. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video. Um, just so we're not wasting a lot of time by watching a job. Okay, so now we're ready to switch over the pins. So I'm going to unfasten my clip A and just pull my pin straight up. Carefully place my cap on it. And now for her lettering, we're going to want purple. My So we're just going to let it the same exact way, put the cap on, place the arrow towards me, place it right in the middle, and press down until I hear it click, and then clamp my A and press my cricket.
Okay. Oh my gosh, guys. I'm super excited to show this. So, when you take it off your mat, you're going to want to lay it flat down. Um, and then you're going to bend your mat so you can take it off without wrinkling your paper. So bend it all the way back until it comes off, so back to the side, and check this out guys. How cool is that? You have your own personalized calendar, weekly planner um, that you can hole punch and fill out with all kinds of lesson plans. You can also do this just for like a daily planner. Um, it's personalized, it's glittery, it's fun. And best of all, she's going to love it. So we're going to put that to the side. And now we're ready to do the next one. Because remember, we had two that we went ahead and designed. So now we're ready to do the next one. This one's going to be on purple paper. So we're just going to line this up the same way we did the first one. And again, just really watch what colors it has you doing. That way you don't mess up several times like I did and place the wrong pins in. So we have this all loaded and just make sure it's really stuck to your mat. And now it's time to load it. So we're going to pull this back down. We're going to make sure it's completely even. Press our arrow key. We do need to change out our purple. So we're just going to unclick A, pull our purple pin out. And this time it says to do uh, our black pen, which means that's for our lines. For the purple, we are doing a gold for the lines. So we're just going to place that in there. Place the arrow towards yourself. Click down until you can't click. Shut that, and now you're ready to do your crease. Again, I'm going to speed up the video just because drawing the lines take a little bit of time. And I'll come back um, after it's completely done. Now we're ready to change to the silver for the letters. And again, these are the colors my daughter has chosen. And we're just going to line that up with the arrow facing you, click it down, and then click it and press the cricket. Alright guys, so we have completed. We're going to take this off the same way. So you're going to put it face down and just roll your mat. Alright, so we are done with these two weeks. Let me show you side to side. They turned out amazing. 
So here is the purple with her gold and silver. And the black one with the silver and purple writing. Those turned out amazing. And now, so now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna flip my screen back around, show you how um, you can go back in, detach everything to create the next two weeks for the month of July. Um, and you're just gonna keep on doing the same cycle over and over and over for each month. So do make sure you save it. Uh, that way in August, you can go back and create the next few weeks for August. Or you can just pick a day and do it all one time. Um, I will tell you, I know the video is not this long, but it has literally taken me about an hour and a half just to design and do these two. So do make sure you plan accordingly. You'll take out that last, the first 30 minutes because you no longer have to design everything. Um, anyways, let me flip you back around so you can see. So now we're done with this part. So we're going to go right here to finish. And this is going to uh, clear out the project where we're no longer um, ready to print. All right, so we're just gonna click gotcha. Now, to um, detach everything, you're just going to select and I would suggest just do one at a time. Let's get this one over. You're gonna click the detach. It's the same button we clicked when we wanted to attach it. So you're just gonna detach everything. <clears throat> Wait for my computer to catch up with me. So once everything is detached, you are going to now be able to change your date. So we're just going to double click on Monday. Text box will come up just like we did before. Delete the 6th. Now our last date was the 19th. The next Monday would be the 20th. So we're just going to change that to 2-0. I'm going to zoom in just so we can kind of see what's going on. Now notice once we change it to 20 zero, our wording is too big. So we're going to need to size that. So we're just going to bring that in just a little bit. And we're going to do the exact same thing all the way down. Okay, so now you're going to do the exact same thing for the next one. We want to reattach everything, so I'm going to shrink it back down. Well, not shrink it down, but zoom out. Highlight it all and attach. it through. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to do the exact same thing, only this time with the next one. I'm going to highlight it, detach, and for Monday we'll start with the 27th.
we're just going to zoom out. Let's get this over to where we can see everything. And you're going to want to make sure you select the whole entire uh, weekly planner. And you're going to want to attach everything. And now you're ready to go back to your Cricut Maker and start uh, writing onto your paper, just like what we did with the first two. So I'm gonna flip y'all back around and we're going to get that set up. So remember, once you get it attached, you'll go to right here to make it. It's going to load it. Also make sure when you finish this project, you let it fully load first um, before you just completely exit out so that you can save it so when you come back to do all of August, you're able to. So I'm gonna kind of walk through with you on that part real quick before um, I switch my camera back over. So I'm gonna hit cancel real quick. I wanna kind of show y'all how to save it. And this will be great because once you save it, when August comes back around, you're ready to do all the weeks in August, all you have to do is open the same uh, file open and deattach, change it to August, change the dates, just like what we've been doing. So you're gonna go right here to save, and you can click, uh, you'll just click save. I've already saved mine, but another box will come up right here, and you're gonna label your product. And I just put Kids Planner, um, just because I'll go back through, I'm gonna end up making one uh, planner per kid in the same binder just so they can keep track of what they are. Just because even though my daughters are on the same um, grade level, I like to record the little grades on the side, make notes. So I like to have one per child just so that when I go back, if they need to correct something or when I'm checking it off after they complete it, I can see exactly which kiddo turned it in or which kiddo did not so we can go back through. So. With that being said, now you're gonna go to make it. And you're gonna do the exact same thing what we did the first time. We're going to adjust it on our grid before we start our maker. So just remember, you're gonna bring this over. I'm still putting my M on the one. I like that placement. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Now the same way with this one, if you're doing color coordination like I'm doing and you're repeating, you're going to want to make sure that you have the right one selected. So just look back at your pages. I ended on 19, so this is the one I want to start with, with the 20. So I'm going to hit continue and since I just lost one I did was purple, I'm going to now do my block sheet. Just line it up at the edges. Make sure everything is stuck down. And I forgot to switch you guys over. So on this part, I just click my medium card stock, and now you're ready to go. So now we are ready to do our deal. So you're gonna line everything up. You're going to make sure it's stuck on there really good. We have our black piece ready, which is what our color coordination is. We're going to redo this. We're not doing our silver first. Um, let's see. I'm not sure what color is that. Oh, so we do still need our silver. I'm starting with silver first. So I'm gonna get this lined up and then we'll put that in. So my mat got uneven. If that happens, you're just gonna take it right back out. Make pressure, make sure it lines up. Once it comes back, we'll put our silver pin back in there. Arrow towards you, press it down. And you're ready to go. I'm going to speed up the remaining parts of the video until we get uh, the other two made, and then I will show you all four, and we'll go from there.
right, guys, we have finished our planner. So we have all four of our planner pages done for the week of uh, July. I hope y'all enjoyed our video. We look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Bye.